Hey guys, it's Tiffany with Mighty Mascara, and guess what? It's September, and I just want to tell Leanne, a Mennonite farmhouse, it was awesome to be invited to the collab. So, I am making a... I better, I better tell you why. Okay. Sorry, that was Miguel in the background. Anyways, I am making a shrimp soup. And it is Mexican, but it is called Caldo Caldo de Cameron. Anyways, it is very intense, intensive, but once you get done, it is so good. It's something that you'll want to make, and the labor that it takes to get it in there is well worth it. But today is step one, so this is actually a two-day process for me. You can do it all in one day, but I've been prepping ahead of time so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pause this and turn the camera around and I'll be able to show y'all what's what, what, what we're doing okay so what I did was I put about 16 cups of water in here that'll give me a little extra to play with if I need it okay because this is not only gonna make the caldo de cameron which is a shrimp soup it's also going to make my sauce for what's left over for empanadas, okay? And you'll see that in this, which is gonna be like a two-fold process. So what I did was I bought three pounds right here, and of the shrimp with the heads on it, the prawns. Now up under this ice, I have a few of these on top, but up on under the ice, I have already uh, taking the skin off, the tail, the head, and uh, of course, deterred them because we don't want that in the soup. So, in this one is all of this, which is all of these three pounds that I have already skinned and all that. Now, this is a bag that I saved from when we had shrimp. Uh, I don't know, it was a couple of months ago, but I do save all the shells and everything. That way, when I go to make shrimp stock, it's like super intense. So what I'm gonna do is take this bag and these three pounds, and both of these is gonna be about six pounds of shrimp, but you can just do it with three. I'm just adding the extra because I need to use it. And I'm gonna put it in here and turn it on high and bring it up to a bowl and then let it simmer for as long as I can up until, you know, it really depends on you as you taste it. You'll know where the shrimp is, where the seasoning is. And the only thing I'm going to put in here is some chicken bouillon, okay? And probably about two tablespoons of it in here just to give it a little kick. And um, once we get this done, I'll bring you back. And like I said, this is the day before because I've already prepped my peppers because you're gonna need uh, Guajillo peppers and, which are right here, they're Guajillo peppers. They're dried Mexican peppers that we use. And then you're gonna need the chili seco peppers, which are right here. So I've been doing a lot of prep work today, taking the seeds out of these, and which I'll show you that later. I'm just trying to get the stock ready. All right, so I'll bring you back and let you see what the stock looks like. I did want to mention that in this stock, I do keep the heads and they go in the stock. Just so you know, you do not have to do this. If you don't want to, you can make yourself chicken stock to do this. However, this increases the taste of the soup, all right? Okay guys, so I have all of my shrimp in here and my, um, the Nor chicken bouillon. It's not going to make it taste like chicken. Uh, we just use this in a lot of recipes. Um, we use that bouillon a lot. And I do have chicken broth, but I don't want that flavor in here. I want the majority of it to be the shrimp, okay? So this is gonna come to a bowl, and then once it comes to a bowl, 
and it reduced, I don't want it to reduce, so the lid's going to stay on it. All I'm trying to do is cook everything out of the chip, of the shrimp, as far as the heads, everything out of it into this broth. So once I bring it up to a boil, I'm going to cut it down just a little bit and put the lid on it and just let it cook. Um, I mean, you can let it cook for two hours, you can let it cook for four hours, you can let it cook as long as you want to. You could do this in a crock pot if you wanted to do it overnight for that flavor because you want that flavor in this soup because you're already you're gonna have shrimp in it it's gonna have tomatoes and peppers the guajilla peppers and the um the uh chili sacco peppers in it but this adds so much more to it than just that so i always make this the day before that way it's good and ready because this takes the longest of the two and then we'll just bring it up to a bowl and let it simmer for several hours. And uh, when I come back, I'll let y'all know about how long it, I did that. Okay. Once we get done with this, I will strain all of this out. Because I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh my gosh, there's shrimp heads in there. But I will strain all of this out and we will just have the broth there. Okay. All right. I'll be back. Okay, guys, so look, I've only had this on. I mean, it hasn't even come to a boil yet, and you can see where the heads and tails and everything are getting pink, but I wish you could smell the water. It The broth smells good already, so the longer that this can do, can steam and sit and, uh, I guess you'd be marinating the darn water with the shrimp. But as long as you can let this go and still keep your stock up here, this is going to be so good. Because it is super intense shrimp smell. So, but it hasn't even come up to a boil yet. So once it comes up to a boil, I'm just going to turn it down from high to low and put my lid on it and just let it, let it sit for several hours. All right? Okay, guys, just a quick peek. So this has been on for probably, I don't know, maybe two hours, I would imagine. But I want you all to look at how deep, how rich this broth is, okay? And this is just from the shrimp heads and the peels. So... This, I mean, like... It smells so good, y'all. But anyways, so remember this is the day before. The other thing we're going to make but the day before is going to be the empanada sauce. Because the way I make my shrimp soup or my caldo de cameron is with empanada sauce. So what you're going to need is six Roma or... Um, I can't remember the other name of the tomatoes that you can use, uh, but you need a tough, uh, uh, you don't want a big, squishy, juicy tomato. You want a Roma tomato. You're gonna need 10 Guajillo peppers. Now with the Guajillo peppers, you have to, hold on. Guajillo peppers, you have to de-seed them. If you don't de-seed them, it's going to be so bitter. And I'm about to show you how to do that. And you're going to take one onion, split it in half, and four cloves of garlic. Just like that. All you got to do is pop them and uh, let them because all of this once after 30 minutes of boiling, we're going to put it in the blender. But remember, don't do it hot. And I will show you why at the end. So, this is a Guajillo pepper. You can get it at the grocery store. You can get it in the Mexican aisle. Um, if you have like a little Asian market, they sell it as well. So, you're going to take the stem off just like this. You're going to pull the stem off. And... The object of the game, you do not want any stem or seeds or veins in here. 
So the best thing to do is take some scissors and cut it. Straight up, just like so. And when you open it, see the seeds right here? You want to pull all of this out because it is very, like, extremely bitter in the empanada sauce or the soup, okay? Right there. So I'm gonna show you one more time with this one. And some of them are gonna be bright red versus the dark red, just so you know. It just depends. We buy these in bulk because we use them in a lot of our dishes. So, and then you're just gonna go down and just cut down the back of it. Oops. All the way to the tip, because sometimes, see what I mean? There's seeds in the tip of it, and I'm telling you guys, they're bitter. Very, very better. Bitter, bitter, bitter. I cannot talk. Get it out, woman. <laughs> I know, I can't talk. So inside here, just so you know, if you see these veins like this, you want to pull them out. Just like this. You're just going to pull them like that, and then go ahead and shake your seeds down. Yes. Just like so. Okay. So, and I will have a printable recipe in here because I'm making a little bit extra. But this is totally separate. All of this is going to be combined. Because remember, we started our shrimp soup stock here. All right. So, in order to make the empanada sauce, make the empanada sauce we need six with you're going to take six to seven Roma tomatoes four cloves of garlic which are right here you don't have to chop them up just smash them one onion and ten to twelve Guajillia peppers the other thing you're going to add in here is something that's called chili seco peppers these can be extremely hot, depending on how much you add in there. Mm -hmm. So if you want it, if you want it mild, you want to do five to six peppers because these are very hot. So make sure you rub your eyes when you add them. Yes. Too. So we kind of like it a medium. So we're gonna add one, two, three, oops, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Okay, so we're gonna add ten of those peppers. So, some people will take this part of it and just add water and chicken bouillon. I do not. That's the reason why I make my shrimp stock. So, what you're gonna add to this is about six cups of your shrimp stock with water. Okay, so. And I'm still leaving my shrimp heads in there because I want to make sure that flavor is really there for my soup. It doesn't like shrimp brains. <laughs> Look, I got rid of all that stuff. I even deterred these shrimps because we like to eat them whole. Um, but some people don't like that. So there's two cups. So we're going to do this two more times. And this is a very authentic Mexican recipe. Uh, Jamie, my middle daughter, her husband, Angel, is from Vera Cruz, and this is something they made, and it's it's like my favorite soup. And I know that it's time consuming, uh, but it's well worth it. Trust me. And with the leftovers, y'all, y'all can take the shrimp 
left over in the uh, soup mix and actually make empanadas out of it, which is like James's favorite. Um, so I might do a second video with that and show y'all. So we're at... So we have added the six cups of the shrimp broth in here, all right? So what we're gonna do is put the lid back on my shrimp broth and let it keep going. This, what you're gonna do is turn it on high and you're gonna bring it up and you're going to do it for 30 minutes at the most. If you go beyond 30 minutes and let these peppers sit, it is the worst taste you can ever taste in your mouth. Okay, so the furthest you want to go is 30 minutes. When you get, once it gets done, you need to let it completely cool. Okay, this is from experience. You need to let this completely cool because what we're going to do is we're going to take this and put it in a blender. And we're going to blend all of this up and that's going to become the sauce, which you will see in a later portion um, we're having to do this in steps, but I promise you, you want to let it cool, and I can tell you why. See these spots up here? That is from a blender exploding on me and about slicing my neck off, and I will put a photo in there of it, but this is for your own safety. Once this comes up to a bowl and you boil it for 30 minutes, I mean let it completely cool before we put it in the blender and blend it up. And I'll bring y'all back once it's cooled off and we'll blend it up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> y'all, James is back behind the camera, so look for me to be giggling. All right, so this has been on for about 20 minutes and it's ready. And how you can tell it's ready is gonna be your tomatoes have popped. See how they popped and the skin's coming off right there? So remember that you've got one onion, four cloves of garlic, ten guajillas, and we made it a little spicy. So we put about ten uh, chili, is it seco? Chili seco peppers is what they are. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so what we did was we put it on high and let it boil with the shrimp stock, which is right here in this pot. But we boiled it with this. So now we're going to cut it off. And this needs to completely cool before we do the next step. Okay, we're back <coughs> for the second part of the shrimp soup. So this is the tomatoes and the no, 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 peppers no. and all that. And I have let this completely cool. And I suggest you do that. The next step that you're, you're gonna do is you're going to take your tomatoes, garlic, and put them, you can do it in a blender or in a, um, food processor, but all of this needs to be blended up very well. Whoops, you missed one. I lost one, sorry. You missed me. Thank you, Miguel. You're such a big helper. Mini. Yes. You missed one. It's okay. You missed one. I did it again. You missed one. I got it. You missed one. Big. I see it. You missed one. And you don't have to overfill it. You can do this in batches. Okay. Papa, you smash my guys. So we're just gonna put the lid on this. Yeah. No, right, just let it burn. And I'm gonna this needs to be done for quite a few few minutes. It's not a quick it's not just that's that's not it. You're gonna have to put it push turn the blender on and let it blend for at least three minutes, okay? If not longer. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so I blended this up for probably about three or four minutes. And you want to try to taste it because you don't 
if you do not blend these skins up very well, it's going to be flaky in there, and it's it's not good. <laughs> it's kind of like eating a tomato skin, but you want it to be like this consistency yeah. here, okay? So I'm going to scrape this into my bowl and continue <laughs> until I get it all processed, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I got everything blended up very well out of there. There's nothing in the bottom of that pan but broth. And you want to hold on to that broth in case you need it. Okay? And I know this probably seems like a lot, um, but this is a very... It's not as hard as what it probably looks like on this film. But it is absolutely so good and it's something that I love that I learned from Jamie's husband and her brother, uh, his brother. But anyways, just so you know, make sure that you wash this immediately because it will look like this, okay? The second thing I'm going to tell you, and I will stay tuned until the very end, do not ever, ever, ever put this in these containers hot please. Even the least bit warm is not a good idea. Um, I used to make this in this container, so I would fill it up with the, uh, the stuff from in here, and then I would put the lid on it, and I turn it over into the machine and do it. Well, and I see a lot of people online do this, where they'll put a rag over it, even when it's hot. Please, I'm telling y'all to be careful because me and Jamie were standing here and Miguel was standing right next to us and this lid blew off, okay? So be careful. If you look real close, you can see where the glass was about to shatter in here. I mean, this just got so hot and me and Jamie were talking. It's so easy to be talking to somebody and get distracted when you're trying to blend up hot stuff. And like I said, this blew off and creak, and everything went to the ceiling. So please be careful about that. If you don't take anything away from the video, take away that. But make sure that you wash these immediately or they will get stained, even your uh, pot. Because the guajillo peppers and leaf make it really red. So, all right. So the next thing that I'm going to do to get ready, oops, is like I said, I want you to save this for reserve. I don't think I'm going to need it because I have so much shrimp stock in here, but I am going to leave it for reserve, but I need to put it in a container. Because the next step is to take this and you're gonna fry it. You're gonna fry it in a little bit of oil in the pan, which brings out all the flavors of all the peppers, all the garlic, of the tomatoes. It makes it taste totally different. You can use it like this, but when you fry it, it's, it just does something different to it. So I'm gonna put this, just in case I need it, the reserve liquid in here. Okay, and set it off to the side. I'm gonna wash this out real quick. And you, I have, I do have jars of this sauce. I can this sauce um, because we use it for empanadas. We use it on burritos because, uh, <laughs> as everybody knows, we make a lot of Mexican. So, Anything with an O in the end of it. Yes. <laughs> we make a lot of Mexican food. But we love it. Um, before Jamie got married to Angel, we didn't really eat that much Mexican food unless we went out to eat because I never could, never knew how to cook it. Okay. But now that I've learned the basics, you can really take it and go a long way. But they do use a lot of intense flavors and a lot of um, 
ingredients, that's for sure. All right. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take about a fourth a cup of oil and you're gonna put it in the bottom of this. And I'm using avocado oil, y'all can use whatever. Vegetable oil, corn oil, whatever. Whatever you like. And I'm going to turn this up on about in between medium, medium high, okay? Because this is going to splatter. So you kind of have to do this simultaneously as you put a little in here and it starts cooking. You're going to have to hit it with the lid immediately or it's, it's just going to go everywhere, y'all. So we're going to let that oil come up to a boil. I mean, not a boil, you know what I mean. And this sauce, once we get it in here, and I am going to put a little bit of salt in my oil because it's going to need it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of salt in here. Once we get this to where I want it to be at to fry, I might need just a little bit more oil. Basically, it's about a fourth a cup of oil is what you're going to need for this batch. When I do the bigger batches to can, I uh, use a little bit more oil. And you'll know when this, you'll know when your oil for this type of cooking is ready because it's going to start to separate out, okay? And you'll see it once it gets hot enough. I'm gonna turn it up on high. Another way you can tell is if you have a real wooden spoon and you put the spoon in there, um, it will make bubbles at the bottom of the spoon. But it is almost there. You can actually see the salt popping in here, okay? And you can hear it. It's not ready yet. See how it's doing this? So when I do this, it's gonna be a fast motion. You don't want to play with it, okay? Because it is gonna pop everywhere, all right? up and that's the way you want it you want it to to be popping like that and once you can get your hand in here back the lid off and we're just gonna stir stir it in and if you need to turn it down just a little bit you can but this literally needs to fry okay we're frying this and right now we're ooh. James is going to start while I finish putting this part in here because I don't want to lose any of, of my stuff. I should have used a bigger spatula to get this out. It's ridiculous with that little one. All right. All right. So you can see how your oil is around the edge. So what we're doing is we're just gonna keep frying this. You can turn it up a little bit. And if we need, you need to keep your lid handy at all times when you're doing this part. And a lot of times I'll just put the lid on it. Go ahead. And give it a couple, just a couple of minutes to let it fry. You want it to fry for five minutes. And like I said, it's gonna bring all the aroma out of the uh... Miguel, are you okay? 
Not now. Y'all, yeah, Miguel and, and uh, Micah have not been feeling good. So that's why I've been working on elderberry syrup and this. So I've just kind of got the lid up a little bit and I'm just mixing that oil in here so that, you know, it's getting all of that together, okay? Because you don't want any oil floating up on the top on this, okay? You want the oil to get incorporated inside of all this yummy goodness in here. So, see how there's no oil in here now? And it's just cooking. We're going to let it continue to cook for about five minutes. Now, I put, <clears throat> and I just tasted this earlier. Remember that I put about 10 chili secos in here. If you do not like heat, do not, do not put these in here. Do, do not. If you, if you do like a little bit of heat, only put about five in there. Because... This is very, very, very warm. But this broth right here is really good. This, this one is. So while this is finishing, yes, boy. And like I said, be careful lifting lids off of stuff. Make sure it's away from your face. I'm telling y'all. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I feel like I'm very lucky to be here after what happened. So, now this is our shrimp broth, okay? And what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna take all uh, the little shrimps out of here. Now remember there's no, no meat in here. It's just my shrimp heads and tails and I did to clean the shrimp so yeah we did deter them <laughs> i have a few that i do put as a garnish that are completely whole and you'll see at the end i just do it because i like them whole me personally but nobody else does in the family i like them like that and these will go directly in the garbage i do not we do not give these to our chickens because they can get choked on the shell. They pretty much eat anything else, but they will for sure get choked. So once I get this main part out, I'm gonna run this broth through this sifter. Not a sifter, that's for bread. I'm gonna run, oh, there was a little shrimp in there, right there. I must have missed his little fanny. Let's check. Yep. Um, and make sure that I get all my shells out and reserve my liquid. So once I do this step, I'm going to take this and strain it, basically. Make sure all my shells are out. And then I am going to go ahead and clean this just because I don't like this stuff around the edge. And then I'm going to add back in my broth back in here. Now this is piping hot right now. Steam shooting out the side. So I'm just going to go in here sideways and I cut the eye off for my bread sauce. Okay? So there's no oil in here whatsoever. And it's still popping. But this, this makes this soup. You could make this soup with a can of tomatoes and a can of tomato paste and the shrimp and the shrimp liquid and garlic and seasoning. It's really good, but this is just an old recipe from uh, Angel's family. So, and I like it. So I thought I would share it with y'all. But we'll be back in a minute and get on to the next step, okay? All right, guys. <clears throat> so I strained my broth and pulled all the shrimp skin out of it. So I've got my bigger pot and I'm gonna put in, at this point, six cups of my broth in here. It's too good. Right. And just a little bit, yeah, a 
little bit more because I What's up, handsome? Right. Concentrating. <laughs> okay. Right working. And then I'm gonna turn this on medium so that I can get it to we have this stock left over too if you want to enhance the flavor so there's two different stocks going here here is our hot mess now we're going to put this in here I was gonna do it in here, but I don't think that I'm gonna have enough room. So I'm just gonna prop this up right here. And just let it, that way it doesn't squash everywhere. Thank you. And I'm gonna make sure that I get everything from this side out. Without making a huge mess. Thank you. And as soon as you scrape this bowl out, you'll need to put some water in it. Because like I said, it will stain. It will stain. So James is going to mix that up. And we are going to add two tablespoons, and I may have to add some more liquid in there to make it happen. So I'm going to add in two tablespoons of garlic powder. careful to try not to dump it in there because it'll create a garlic ball or onion ball and it's nasty yeah and it's bad and then I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of onions and these are actually out of my garden I just put them in this thing whenever I grind them up clump up like that you can mash it up against the side to break it off to break the ball up because this is um, stuff that I've ground it up now you can add a uh, chicken broth to it if you want to but this is this is gonna be up to you and your taste buds okay because um, everybody's different, all right? Let me see where we're at. <coughs> like I said, be careful with them chili seconds. The next thing you're going to add is 
add in is going to be a tablespoon of oregano. About a heaping tablespoon. Now which oregano is that? Is that Italian or Spanish? This is Mexican oregano, guys. It looks totally different. Make sure that when you add this to this, it needs to be Mexican oregano, not Italian. Big difference. And you can get it in any grocery store. Um, the Mexican oregano. When you do this, you need to take it and crush it in your hands because it is buds. Mexican oregano buds. So you've got to break that up yourself. And you can smell the this oregano is totally different. It's it's like the difference between smoked paprika and paprika. Big difference. Okay. Now unfortunately <laughs> we have to add in one tablespoon of fajita mix, but this is my personal fajita mix. Um, if, if anybody wants that recipe, you can let me know, but it's just my personal fajita mix, but you can use store-bought fajita mix. It's fine. Any of this, you can use store-bought anything. Tomatoes, tomatoes, or if you can, your own tomatoes, which I do. I wanted to do this from scratch the right way. Okay. So... We're gonna let this come up to a simmer. That way all of these herbs can get involved in here. Once we get it up to a simmer and they're involved in it and everything's coming together, we're gonna add one mom and maybe two, I'm not sure yet. And then we're gonna put in our shrimp. So when I come back, I'm gonna have this mess cleaned up. That way y'all can see what we're gonna do for the next step while this is coming up. All right. Okay. <laughs> While I was off camera, I did add uh, four more cups of my shrimp stock in here because it just wasn't enough to feed all 10 of us. So right now my soup is kind of loose and a lot of people like their soup like that. However, comma, I do not. So I am going to incorporate in one jar of tomato paste because I like my soup a little bit thicker than that. I wouldn't add cornstarch in there. That might be just a little too soup, too thick. Might be like a chata and uh, might be a little too thick. Sorry, I was getting everything out of there. It was not. Yeah, I don't want to waste anything. All right, so I'm going to get this off of here, off my knife, and get my um, tomato paste worked in, just like so. Food is so expensive to waste. This is a little drop to me is uh, not good. Not good. I don't like that. So the next thing that you're going to do, and I'm going to show you, because remember I told y'all in the beginning that I already prepped all the shrimp, all right? And I also explained to y'all that I eat my soup with the prawn with the head on it. So the next thing, the next step we're gonna take, which I think all of my tomato paste is almost dissolved. Almost. 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 It is almost there. Oops. Not really. Okay. We're going to let that sit right there for just a minute. And then I'll just let's do it in a minute. You will need, you could do, I did, I start off with one lime, y'all. Okay. And I don't use a big juicer and all that stuff. I just take my fork and put it in there and turn my fork just like so and bring it around the edge. With the fork? Yep. 
I saw that channel with a flock. Oh, such a cute name. Um, get it for chicken flock. Mm -hmm. It's so cute. It's such a cute name. Mm -hmm. Alright, so then see how much juice you get out of that? Just like you would if you did it in a in a little thingy. But I try to stick to old ways just in case. <laughs> I have to go back and use them. That way I don't forget them. shrimp are going to go in here. You can see that I've already cleaned cleaned my shrimp for them and then I have my shrimp because I like my shrimp like that. And it doesn't take long for these shrimp to cook. Yeah. <laughs> And then what we're going to do is just go on ahead. And I did do this prep work prior. And if you do, whoo, if you do do it prior, put your shrimp on ice. Don't just don't put it in the refrigerator and think it's going to be okay. Okay. So everybody knows that once shrimp turns pink, it is done. But remember, it's not just pink. The shrimp needs to be from here and be curled up like this. And you don't want to overcook it, okay? You do not want to overcook it. The last thing that I'm going to put in here, which will be at the very end, is some cilantro, which is going to add another element of flavor to it and make it... And it's going to take a few minutes because I'm not rolling this on a bowl. I have it on medium heat. So once my shrimp get done, I'll bring you guys back and let you see it. And then we'll, we'll do a taste test on it, okay? Alright, so the shrimp is done. And this is how you can tell, especially with a prawn. The tail is going to be touching the front legs on it. And of course, with a regular shrimp, they're just, you know, regular. They took touch but with a prawn it takes a little bit longer the bigger shrimp with that on it so and there's a lot of different things that you can put as toppers you can take tortillas and make little crispies out of it but the way that I eat mine is I put my cilantro on there, and I like cilantro, and I squeeze an additional lime on there, okay? If you wanted to add avocado, you could definitely add avocado. If you wanted to add sliced jalapenos, that's really good too, or serranos, okay? So, I will not show y'all how I eat my shrimp with the tails, but I am going to take a taste test of this because it is very good. And hot. Like chicken. It's very good. I mean, you could you could eat this without the shrimp. Like, just the broth is so good. Mm. Like a nice cold day meal. Yeah, like seriously, it warms you from 
just all the way down to your toes. <clears throat> but anyways, this is my take on shrimp soup, which we call it caldo de cameron. And it is very good. And I want to say thank you so much to Leanne at Mennonite Farmhouse for allowing me to be in the collaboration. There is a lot of really good channels on here that have done a lot of videos. And we have, uh, today is Friday the 23rd. So you have about two weeks left, but make sure you go back and watch the beginning and comment on them because you're not going to win the prize on October the 1st if you don't put a legit genuine comment in the, uh, in the, uh, on each video. It's very important. And plus, we as creators really enjoy the comments. Um, they make us feel really good that somebody took the time. Good or bad. To, good or bad. You know, to take the time, their own personal time, to, to leave us a message. But there's a lot of collaborations going on right now that y'all should check out. Um, there's Last Chance Cook-Off 2022. Croctoberfest is coming up next month. That's going to be really good. So y'all will all have a lot of ideas on different soups and stews and chowders for the winter. And it's all about, you know, helping everybody learn something new and, you know, feeding your families and, and people coming together. So, again, Leanne, you know, thank you so much. Anyways, guys, I love y'all. Y'all have a good day. Stay safe. Stay prepared. And get busy. We're going to get a, a quick snapshot of Mr. C taking a taste test of that uh, caldo de cameron. And I don't have a Spanish accent, so don't be expecting some, you know, I could get Angel and them come in here and tell us what it is. That's a hot chicken. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all have a good day. Cool. Y'all, I was going to give y'all one more way, my favorite way to eat it. Just roll you up a tortilla. It could be corn or um, flour. flour. And just sop that juice up. Grab you a little cilantro. And like I said, this is good without the shrimp in it. Mm -hmm. You know? Like a Mexican biscuit and gravy. Mm hmm It is, really. Very good. All right, man. I can't stop eating it. Like and subscribe. Okay, guys. Here are the shots from where the blender blew the lid off on me. This is the reason why I say be very careful putting hot stuff in blenders. It's just so important to let it cool off. Um, and I've made this soup a million times, and it, it happened. Don't get distracted when you're doing anything that has hot liquid. So, I love you guys. Y'all have a good day, and thank you for watching.